Okay, so these ones we've got here, uh, what's the sum from, of, the natural, of the integers from 1 to 10? 55. Okay. Uh, from 1 to 99? 1,950. 4,950. Okay, so this one, I gave a little hint about how you might like to think about this one, but you could think about it in the way that Andrew did it as well. Um, the way you could think about this is summing it all the way from 1 to 20 and then removing the sum from 1 to 10 is one of the ways that you could do this. So if you're going to sum them from 1 to 20, you could do a half times 20 times 21, which is going to be 210. And you could subtract because it's got everything up to the 11, up to 10 has been removed. We know from up to 10 is 55. So you could do 210 minus 55, which is, this is why my brain is just so not awake. Um, one, 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 five, five. Yes. Yeah, one, five, five. And then again, you could do a similar thing for this one. You could add up all the numbers from one to 200 and then remove the numbers from one to 99. Does that make sense, of why you can remove them? So from 1 to 200 would be a half times 200 times 201. And what's the sum of the numbers from 1 to 99? Good. We've already got it on the page, haven't we? So we've got 20100. Nice quick maths there. Subtracting that. And I'm definitely not doing this in my head. What did that come to? <laughs> 15,150, and if it's wrong, it's not wrong it's excellent, it's in the calculator. So these two examples I did here, Andrew, I was, your way obviously works, yeah. but I just wanted to push to the other way because of what's going to happen in the next yeah. bit, okay? Because in the next bit, I want to think about these two different kinds of series and how they are different and how we might be able to deal with these different series. So can you spot the difference between these two series? Good, the starting point is not one, okay? The starting point is not one here. So I actually want to have a look at this one in a bit more detail, okay? This one, we could just work out using the formula. This one, I want to think about how I could express it in terms of other series, okay? Other series that start at one. So how do you think I might be able to write this one in terms of series? that must start at one. Because one thing I should probably say before we move on here, this formula is only true for exactly what is written here. And you'll notice in this formula, it says r equals one. So you can't use this formula on here because it doesn't say r equals one, it says r equals 21. So we want to be able to rewrite it in terms of sigma notation that begins with r equals one so that we can use the formula. So how do you think I could rewrite this in terms of things that have r equals 1? Yeah, Andrew. Um, um, 50 on top of that one. 50 on top of this one. And then um, 20, and then you just take away the result. Good. Why is it 20 and not 21? Because 21 is used in the formula. In the, in the, like, see. Yeah, this one is starting at 21. OK, so we want to remove everything up to 20. So this is what I've written down here. If the starting point is not one, you will need to subtract everything below the starting point. And it must be in terms of the formulae must begin with r equals one. Otherwise, the formulae don't work because that's what we built them on. We built them with r equals one. So that's sometimes a thing that people make a mistake in this, that if they were going to do it between 50 and 21, they would do 50 and 21. But you just need to make sure you do it one lower than that in order for it to be able to work, OK? So we're going to have a quick go at doing this kind of thing that we've got here, OK? This is where it's starting to look a bit more complicated and a bit confusing. You'll notice we've got that N is, we've got your capital letter N here, um, and it's told us a few different things. Really, this question should have had some wording. It should have said, show that the sum of r from r equals 5 to 2n minus 1 is 2n squared minus n minus 10 for n being greater than or equal to 3. Now, this is kind of separate to the question. This is saying, just to let you know, n is greater than or equal to 3. Why is n greater than or equal to 3? Because the top number has to be 
The top number doesn't have to be bigger than the top, the bottom number. Good. It needs to be the same or bigger. It can't be less than it. Otherwise, you know, when you've tried to put something into like a computer program and it just completely crashes the whole computer, that's what happens with this sigma notation. If you try and put r equals five on the bottom and then three on the top, it just doesn't make any sense at all. So that's why they've put this restriction in here that n is greater than or equal to three. That stops that like error occurring. Um, okay, so we're going to try and rewrite this. We've got the sum of r equals 5 to 2n minus 1 of r. How could I rewrite this so that they can use the formula they starting with r equals 1? What would my first one be? It's going to start with r equals 1. What would it be for the top? Four. No, we're not going to do 4. We're going to think about, we're doing the same as that subtraction. We're going to try and remove some of them. Maybe it's easier to think of just for the first one it wouldn't be 4. For the, this second one, it would be 4 because we're going to remove them up to 4. And then this one is going to be 2n minus 1. So these two things that we've got here are equivalent to each other. We're saying from 5 to 2n minus 1 is the same from 1 to 2n minus 1, removing from 1 to 4. And I'll just put a quick reminder that our formula is this. So in this case that we've got here, our n is actually 2n minus 1. That means when you use the formula, everywhere that there is an n, you're going to put 2n minus 1. OK, it's just simple substitution that we've got there. So for this first part of the expression, it is going to be a half n, but it's not n anymore. It's 2n minus 1. And then it's going to be n plus 1 but it's not n plus 1 anymore. It's 2n minus 1 plus 1, which is just 2n. OK? Everything OK with this so far? And then this next bit, we can just use the formula directly. It's going to be a half multiplied by n, which in this case is 4, multiplied by n, minus, n plus 1, which is 5. So the best way of simplifying this, I would probably deal with the half and the 2n that we've got here which is just n. So you have n, 2n minus 1, minus a half times 4 times 5 is 10, which gives us 2n squared minus n minus 10. OK? So there's definitely a jump from what we've done in a previous thing to this. We've gone from something that makes sense, and you could probably explain, explain it to like a cousin or a brother or a sister who just understood what numbers were. But there's a jump here, because it's now gone into the abstract realm of summing up to some other, other ending point. Yes? Um, you know with um, trying to, with voles like between two, yeah. could you make a formula for that sort of similar to yeah. yeah, could you rewrite this so that you had a new formula for like different starting points and things? Or yeah. so that, yes, so you, you could do. And that's essentially what we do in this topic is we will be coming up with new formulae for different things. Yeah. However, those new formulae for different things are all related to the original formulae. So we only properly learn the original formulae and then we come up with a formula that will apply to our particular question that we're answering. And if you had an incredible brain that could remember all of them, then they're all there. They're all like formulae that exist specifically for those series, but they all are born out of these ones that we have here. No, but what I mean is, so you know how you to find how much you like the difference between those two. Like these bits here, yeah. yeah could you make one specific from that for that from that? Um, you could, but it just starts to get really messy, and it's like it's just not it's not um, it's not worthwhile doing. It's not worthwhile spending time on that. But very but good question. OK, so we've just got one uh, last kind of question that we've got here that we can either have a go at together. Should we do it together and just kind of talk through? And then I'm going to give you these questions to have a go at for homework. So when you look at this to begin with, what's the first things that you spot when you look at this statement that we've got here? Marco, what's one of the things that you spot when you look at this? 
r is not equal to 1. So we're going to need to do the first one of writing it with r equals 1. I suppose something else that I might notice is the top number is not n, which it traditionally is. So it's going to be this part here. What are we going to subtract from this one? So it's going to be from r equals 1, whoops, from r equals 1 to n minus 1. Why is it n minus 1, Andrew? Um, because it, re um, it receives um, the start down. Yep, it start, this one's starting at n, so we want to remove everything up to the 1 before that. It was a bit easier before because it was a number, and now it's no longer a number. We have to trust our powers of algebra, and we know that 1 before n is n minus 1. And then it's just going to be a case of substituting into that formula because they now are looking quite similar to it. So it will be a half. What comes next for this one? What's, what's, half n. But it's not n, is it, anymore? N one. Just having a look at this one, it's not n. A half of 3n because the, the n bit is now 3n. Confusing. So we've got a half of 3n and then... Good. And then 3n plus 1. And then we're going to subtract a half of n, but n in this case is now n minus 1, and then n minus 1 plus 1, which is just n. OK? So we're now going to just do, there's no common factors, really. I guess there's a, a couple of common, no, there are, are some common factors. Uh, we're going to try and use some of our factorizing techniques that we started today's lesson with to avoid expanding and factorizing, OK? Um, what have they all got in common that we might be able to, to pull out? N. They've all got n, and they do have a half as well. I think I might not pull out the half, because when I look at what I've got at the top, it doesn't have a half there. It has got an n. So I'm going to pull out the n, and then hopefully I'm going to pull out a 2 as well, OK? So if I pull out an n, what should I get left with in this first bracket? Half. Half. A half. So I've pulled out the half, but what do I pull out from this bit as well? Um, three. A 3. So I've got a half, a 3, and then I've got a 3n plus, three one. plus 1. No, because the n is only being pulled out once. If you no, take it out of... So you haven't closed that bracket. Uh, so you've pulled out the n from there as well? Then. No, I've only pulled out... I haven't done this section yet. No, from 3n plus 1. I've only pulled the n from here. Because if I pull the n from here as well, I'm actually taking n out twice, which is taking out n squared. Do you mean that first bracket? No, oh, yeah, okay, okay. What do you mean? I mean, how do you mean? Uh, oh, sorry, no. So all I've done is I've just pulled this n out. I'm going to pull out this n as well. So I then get minus a half n minus 1. Big brackets. Maybe these should have been okay, square brackets. Yeah, yeah, and then that makes it a bit easier to see, yeah. OK? So I'm just going to sort all of this out. So inside these square brackets, I've got 3 over 2 multiplied by 3n. What's 3 over 2 multiplied by 3? Three. 9 over 2. So it's 3 over 2 times 3 is 9 over 2. So it's 9 over 2n. And then I've got 3 over 2 times 1, which is 3 over 2. And then I've got minus a half n, and then at the end, minus, plus, a half. plus a half. So I'm going to go back to my round brackets. So it's 4n plus 2. plus 2. But this has got a common factor of 2. So I'll take a 2 out, and I get 2n, 2n plus 1. OK? So that's going to be your questions I'd like you to have a look at for homework. Exercise 3A, questions 1 to 6. Okay. No, not hearing that at all.